and you give me the intro. All right. Thanks for coming, everyone. For those who don't know, this is Adrian Crenshaw, veteran of the scene, veteran of the con, um, famous for irongeek.com. He's the reason that we have all the video, audio stuff going on right now. So we're really, help. We're really thankful that he's here. He's going to talk about some OPSEC stuff. All right, guys. If you want to... Yeah. If you want a really serious talk, you have two other choices. Right now, though, the talk you're going to see is of flags, frogs, and 4chan, OPSEC versus weaponized autism. Now, a little bit about me, and I will get to the obligatory trigger slide in a second. I run irongeek.com. I post mostly uh, InfoSec videos from various conferences now. I used to post a lot of my own personal tutorials. I still do sometimes, I suppose. I also post um, articles I've written. Uh, I have an interest in InfoSec education, but I don't know everything. I'm just a geek with time in my hands. So if I get something wrong, let me know. For the research for this talk, there's probably a few things I messed up. I'm also the co-founder of DerbyCon. This is a word from our sponsor. He's so cute. All right. This talk may not be for everyone. Here's a big trigger warning. You already noticed that the title has weaponized autism. I don't mean to offend artistic people. The reason it's called weaponized autism is because that is what various people from 4chan and Anonymous and so forth call it, weaponized autism. The reason they call it this is because, anybody familiar with um, Asperger's? It's on the autism spectrum. Uh, Dr. Asperger called his, uh, some of his children he was working with little professors because they had like a laser focus on one particular subject. They're like, wow, I'm really interested in paleontology and dinosaurs, or I'm really interested in electronics, and they developed like this PhD level knowledge of it as a 12-year-old. So he called them little professors. And some of the people on 4chan have some of the same kind of focus for weird things, because they will do a di distributed, across the brains, search and recollect of any kind of situation. I mean, uh, they will look at something and split up a task and be able to figure it out. It's kind of interesting. Now, I'm not the one who came up with the term. Uh, it's just a term that's in use. Uh, some of the terms I'm be using are in Chan culture, so some are a little bit offensive. I gave a talk on Anonymous like five years ago that was accepted, and um, I talked to one of the review board people after the fact. They said, while Mr. Crenshaw's talk was well-researched, it was wholly inappropriate. So keep in mind, uh, some things that may come up may be offensive, but this is just the terminology they use. So if you're going to be doing stuff in Chan culture, you might want to know what these things mean. These are all useful terms, though, when you're looking into things like anonymous, B, and poll. Okay, obviously not about real autism, which I pretty much already covered, but it's the term they use for obsessive focus. Um, this talk is basically intended to showcase examples of people who have been doxxed, messed with, or affected by the loosely organized groups online. Essentially, mostly in this case, uh, 4chan. Though there might be some 8chan stuff, there might be some other um, groups that have come into play in here. This is not intended to condemn or promote what these people have done. Although I am going to give tips on what they could have done better. So in some cases, the people who got pwned, I'm actually okay with them being pwned, so I'm actually giving tips on how they could have done it better, even though I don't like those particular people. But this is supposed to be on the general subject matter of what these people could have done better OPSEC-wise to um, not to have had happen to them what happened. Okay, news reporters, also, news reporters also get things a lot wrong as far as anonymous is concerned. Like, I remember five years ago, people were talking about anonymous as if it was some kind of organized group, and this person's a leader in anonymous. Anonymous really isn't a group. It's more of a meme. It's people who call themselves anonymous because 4chan, by its very nature, people post as anonymous. It's more of like a, a banner term meme than it is an actual group. And poll is the same to a degree. Um, poll, well, poll is its own weird, odd entity. Um, people in the news refer to people as like leaders and so forth, but that's kind of an inaccurate thing. And also you can see subgroups and um, when Anonymous did something back in the day, generally speaking, it was because a couple of people said, suggested, hey, you know what, let's go do this. And if enough people agreed, they'd all go troll somebody in this particular way. But it wasn't like they had one particular political ideology or not. Uh, if I was to say they had any political ideology, it is screwing with people with USI. Unwarranted self-importance. If you show ego, if you show haughtiness, they are interested in uh, messing with you. 
So it's not really a group, it's more of a shared label or meme. Uh, this causes big league attribution problems and someone say Anonymous did something. Um, there are a lot of also subgroups which I won't cover all the names of because those are more offensive than probably anything else I have in this particular talk. Um, the unifying principles though is do it for the lulls. Is it funny? Well, let's go do it. Uh, internet censorship is bad. Do not hurt cats. And down with unwarded self-importance. And by that cats thing, I'm serious. You go on 4chan, you can say all sorts of stuff. You can make fun of the Holocaust as much as you want. But if you hurt a cat, God help you. <laughs> all right, let's explain a little bit more. By the way, anybody who doesn't know what a meme is, Richard Dawkins here actually came up with the term as basically like genes that get passed on generation to generation, but instead it's a mental gene. It's a mental thing that gets passed on from one person to another to another. So this guy actually came up with the term meme. Over 9,000 example, the game, law cats, etc. All right, a lexicon, poll. All right, this is the politically incorrect board on 4chan. Surely there are a few racist people. Most of these people, though, are edgelords, and I'll cover the edgelords in a second. One of the few things in modern culture you can do to truly offend somebody is say something that's racist, um, homophobic, uh, uh, anti-Semitic, sexist, whatever. These people deliberately push those buttons. And that's what makes them edgelords. An edgelord is basically someone who trolls others by expressing views that they deliberately mean to be offensive. They might actually hold these views, but they'll say them just to get your attention. And there's a whole lot of people on um, poll who... Um, uh, how do we put this? Well, they uh, they um, role play neo Nazis. Uh, they they deliberately try to troll people with that. I dare say most of them are just edge lords trying to get attention and having fun. But there is a lot of racist, offensive, and so forth language on poll. Uh, B is the random board on 4chan. It's essentially about uh, trolls, trolling, trolls, trolling, trolls. Someone said something about trying to troll 4chan is kind of like pissing in an ocean of piss. Don't mess with it. One time, uh, you know what Tumblr is? Tumblr once apparently tried to do a raid on, uh, for, on 4chan. The expected results happened. It was not pretty. It's, uh, no, it was a guy who goes by the name Internet Aristocrat actually has a, has a video on YouTube about that. It did not go well for them. Pepe. Pepe is a frog. Despite what Hillary Clinton says, he's not a racist hate symbol. Pepe is used for a bunch of different people. There's actually a group of people who have popped up called Kekistanis, who have used Pepe in opposite ways. Um, the alt-right kind of claimed Pepe, and the alt-right has its own multiple factions. Like there's the 1488ers, which are hardcore white nationalist kind of people. And then there's other ones who are just nationalists, and then there's other people who are just shit posters, which is basically posting online just for the fun of it and having, you know, making fun of things and posting memes. Uh, the Kekistanis um, also use Pepe a whole lot uh, as basically the uh, icon for just having fun on the internet, posting stuff, mischief, and so forth. The alt-right actually doesn't necessarily like the Kekistani people because um, the Kekistani people, they see, the alt-right sees the Kekistani people as appropriating Pepe back from them. So it's a big meme. See, all internet symbols, when someone says a symbol means something, a symbol means whatever it means to that particular person. For instance, um, if we see a swastika here in the United States, we automatically think Nazis. But if you live in a mostly Buddhist country or a Hindu country, the swastika means something different. I remember seeing a picture of like a Native American tribe of people who were in a basketball team and the jerseys all had swastikas on them. Because that particular Native American tribe, it meant something different. Pepe is the same way with that. And to um, a lot of people, to the Kekistanis, of 4chan and other places, essentially uh, Kek is an Egyptian god of chaos. And they love chaos, and they love trolling, and they love the memes, and uh, the Kekistani thing, I think it first came off as a term from uh, 4chan on the poll board. Then there's this British, um, a slightly left-leaning dude named Sargon, goes by Sargon of Cod, who came up with the idea, he noticed that the, in, in uh, the British census, that internet shit posters could be concerned, considered their own ethnic group. So he kind of campaigned to get Kekistani listed on the UK census. Kind of like Jedi will end up getting listed. So, um, yeah, you know, good luck with that. Weaponized autism. Like I said, don't hate me over the term. It's basically the term they use on 4chan for this like, obsessive focus on 
coming together to achieve a goal through a bunch of people. Like, uh, the, this is guy, um, Tim Miller, he uh, does uh, freelance journalism. He was talking about a time he was posting around on 4chan, and a bunch of people was like, you know, we, we want to see if we can affect the real world through just sitting here on our butts in front of our computer screens. And so they did a bunch of things just to get like a, a traffic cone moved, and they ended up accomplishing it. All right, a few cases of um, 4chan or other people's trolling folks and uh, because of bad operational security. The first one I want to talk to is, I, I'll pronounce this Doc Ekanuno or Nephew Chan. Here's what happened to this guy. It was a user on 4chan. He posted a pic of a semi-nude ant of his uh, taken with an iPhone. Uh, he posted pictures of the 4chan, which was probably not the best idea in the world. Anonymous pulls EXIF data from the file. This probably was more common in phones a couple years ago, but EXIF, EXIF data is still there for a while. It's metadata about the, uh, the picture, like what phone it was taken from and so forth. And sometimes this will include GPS coordinates. Well, 4chan pulled up GPS coordinates, contacted this individual, and um, asked him to send more nudes or they'd reveal to his aunt that he's a perv. There's more details out there. Uh, you have to go to archive.org, though, because the original Encyclopedia Dramatica article has been taken down. So, what do we learn from this? One, don't post nudes. I'm sorry, I know this sounds like victim blaming, but uh, just don't post nudes any place online, because if it's online, but to say something is online forever, if it's ever online, it's not quite true, but it's hard to control the spread of digital content. Also, don't be a piven nephew, obviously. And um, scrub your metadata. Uh, I think most uh, social media sites and so forth have gotten a lot better with this about automatically scrubbing it. Uh, there used to be things you could do with image names that people would post like an image on 4chan and based on the image name, you could tell what Facebook profile it came from. That's gotten better over the years. Uh, turn off geotagging functionality on your phone if it has it. And uh, that would help you out with that. Another case of where 4chan messed with people. Remember how I said, you know, God forget, God help you if you mess with a cat and the 4chan people find out? Like, you can make fun of the Holocaust, you can make fun of anything racist, sexist, homophobic, anything. It's all good on 4chan. Don't mess with a cat. Well, Kenny Glenn screwed that up. Okay, on February 15, 2009, Kenny, Chris Glenn, posted two videos showing him and his brother's abuse of a cat named Dusty. Ooh, 4chan, yeah, not, not good. He posted them on YouTube under the name Glenn Spam one and also he had an account on some other site, NPC Films, a different video site that had uh, his zip code involved in it. Well, uh, what they did was they started looking for all the Glens in, on social media within that particular zip code and compared and contrast photos. So they noticed in the video of the cat abuse, various objects in the background, the carpet, the walls, and so forth and eventually figured out who this dude was. Uh, green windows and so forth, uh, the video site that he uploaded to, and uh, they started ordering pizzas and taxis to his address, uh, and eventually the dude was charged with animal abuse, and Dustin and the other cat were rescued. So, you know, it has a bright ending. Luckily, uh, seeing how many years it's been since then, hopefully Dusty lived up a happy life with some other um, foster family. And Kenny got party banned, which is uh, Chinese for arrested. Okay, what do we learn about this? Don't abuse kitties. That should go without saying. Especially don't abuse kitties in front of anonymous. I, just, these guys love their cats. I don't know. I like cats okay too, but these guys have an affection I don't even comprehend. Don't use real zips, obviously. Uh, better mask would help because obviously he didn't cover enough of his face. Uh, don't do things in identifiable areas, and you know what, if there's one message you can get from all the case examples in this talk, it's don't do things in identifiable areas, because with enough people and enough time and a little uh, geolocation with Google Earth, people will find you. And there's more info on Glenn, uh, sorry, KennyGlenn.net about this particular incident. <sighs> yes, that is the dabbing Pepe. I have a credit to the guy who did that for me earlier. Um, 4chan bombs ISIS, and this is a case example I really want to research more for future talks, because I find one example of it. Someone said, yeah, a couple of times 4chan bombed ISIS, and I'm like, wait, one time? Because as far as I can tell, there may be three times when 4chan has done research on um, 
ISIS training videos and led to airstrikes. So what happens is 4chan, specifically the poll board, uh, they find like rebel training videos and so forth, and they'll notice uh, features in the background. They'll identify landmarks and structures and so forth. Like they took a, uh, a map of Syria, broke it up into chunks, into grids, and said, all right, you do this part, you do this part, you do this part, you do this part. And uh, with a little Google Earth and uh, weaponized autism, they can figure out what's what. And apparently, in a couple of these cases, they um, slipped the information to this particular individual who slipped the information to the Russian Ministry of Defense, and they blow the living hell out of some ISIS installations. And, um, oh man, there's a, let's see if this even comes up. I'm trying to bring this up in a browser, and I may not actually be connected to the internet, so let's see if this works. Like, do you have these? on the various boards where they'll see, oh, there's this location, let's go, go look through Google Earth, let's see where this particular thing seems to exist. And just through the power of you know, a bunch of people all going and looking and figuring it out, they figure out what something is and say, hey, this seems to be the geographical location. If you want to bomb ISIS, hit this particular spot. And I, like I said, I need to do more research on this. It seems to be multiple times that they have done this. Um, Okay, I got the spinning pinwheel of death. Stop. Okay. Well, that's not good. What the hell? Yeah. All right, PowerPoint decided to lose itself. So... Let's see if we can get PowerPoint back up. It decided to crash. Oh, now it's in. Oh, I just want to see slideshow. I don't need. Oh, that's better. Okay, so I've I found out at least two times they did this. Then while I was researching the first time, someone said, oh yeah, this is like what we did in this previous thread. So they've apparently done this multiple times. And the way one particular guy defined it in 2017 was, uh, TFW, the neo-Nazi section of an American-based Japanese-owned anime website has assembled an international multicultural team of board artists that provides airstrike targeting data to, on Syrian terrorist training centers to the Russian military defense because they have nothing else to do on a Saturday night. We are officially entering snow crash levels of what the fuckery. <laughs> I think that sums up 4chan in multiple ways. Okay, so what can we learn from this? One, don't be a terrorist. I don't think this one really needs to be covered, but uh, that would have helped them. Don't have identifiable landmarks in the background. And there's so much more info about this, and I will make these slides available at some point, just tweet at me and I'll post a link to my um, slides so people can have them. All right, case number three, Comrade Bike Lot. And by the way, if people don't know the Pepe meme, one of the things he com commonly says is, feels bad man or feels good man. And he originally came from, I think it was Boys Club uh, cartoon by Matt Fury. Matt Fury actually tried to kill him off because of the association that Pepe now has with some sections of the alt-right, like the 1488 section of the alt-right, because they try to kill him off, and then, of course, the next thing you know, a day later, or less, they have a ton of Jesus memes of Jesus Peppy coming back from the dead. I don't know why he thought that would work, but anyway, on April 15, 2007, there was a Patriot rally that happened at a Civic Park in Berkeley, California. Uh, likely both sides on, the, on it were... Um, peaceful, so you had some leftist people, some rightist people, some Trump supporters, some free speech supporters, a few people who are a little left of center who just don't like Trump, and most of them are probably you know, peaceful, getting along, just talking to each other. But then Antifa types show up. Now, I don't know if you know what Antifa is. Antifa, in theory, it stands for anti-fascist. Unfortunately, in practice, Antifa considers anybody fascist who's slightly to the right of Lenin. So it's, um, everybody's a fascist to these guys. Uh, it's not a good scene. So one of these entertainment types starts hitting people over the head with a bike lock at the um, event. 
But there was video of the event, so people get him on camera a whole lot. And 4chan notices. This is one of the gentlemen who got smacked upside the head of a bike lock. And I don't know if you've ever seen one of those U-shaped bike locks. They're substantial. They'll mess you up. And homeboy got messed up. But what they did was they ended up taking video and superimposing other shots. And at some point in time, this particular guy's mask also came off. They compared it with people in the area. Uh, and eventually, they came up with the identity of one of the individuals, which they slipped to the police. They discovered this gentleman, Eric Clanton. He is apparently someone who taught ethics at Diablo Valley College. And he's going around smacking people with bike locks upside the head. Uh, they also found his OK Cupid, which unfortunately was down by the time I got to do the research, because I'd really like to see what this guy, you know, uh, I don't know, long walks in the moonlight while reading Das Kapital. I'm not sure what he's into. Uh, but eventually, he got himself banned also. So, what do we learn from this? One, don't hit people you disagree with on the head for, just because you disagree with them. That would help. Better masks, is some of these Antifa types, I, I, I don't know if you've ever heard of black block tactics. Some of the well, protesters slash rioters slash whatever you want to call them, they use black block tactics. The idea is they're all dressed in black, they all stay in a group, so that when people start getting arrested and you, you don't know who was who. Like you have eyewitness testimony, like, well, yeah, I think it was them, but I'm not sure it was them because they were all dressed in black, they all had masks on. But if you look at some of these Antifa protests, they dress slightly different from each other and you can tell them apart. So... They probably should be using better masks. Major in something else, I love philosophy. I think philosophy actually is an interesting subject to study and so forth. Not something I would ever try to get a bachelor's in, though. Um, more info on this particular gentleman can be found at all sorts of locations. And, um, yeah. That brings me to my final case study. And this is Shia LaBeouf, uh, He Will Not Divide Us, and the Second Plague, who... For those who, didn't, uh, who skipped out on some of the Sunday schools, the second plague was the plague of frogs. Praise Keck, as peppy as his prophet. Anyway, Shia LaBeouf, and I think, um, oh great, uh, Fresh, no, oh, no, no, Jazzy, the Fresh Prince is his son. Jaden, Jaden Smith. Uh, yeah, they set up this like, art project called He Will Not Divide Us. The essential idea was they really didn't like Trump getting elected, so for like four years, they're going to have a bunch of people standing in front of a webcam saying, he will not divide us, he will not divide us, he will not divide us, he will not divide us. That was their idea of how this project was going to go down. They set it up in New York at the Museum of the Moving Image. However, Paul finds out. Like I said, Paul, I don't really believe Paul believes everything that some people on Paul say they believe, but they do believe in screwing with people. So, obviously, trolling ensues. This is some of the more mild trolling. Uh, but various other things happen, like people come up and say various crazy shit. How easily offend you guys? Someone comes up to the thing and says, saying, he will not divide us. He will not divide us. He they'll start saying, he will come inside us. He will come inside us. He will come inside us. Uh, there are people who start saying things, the, uh, the Holocaust never happened. They'll say shit like that. They'll, they'll, they'll order pizzas to the place. Uh, they, they will do freaking anything. They actually, there's been a couple of times when 4chan has tried to convince the media that various things are white supremacist symbols that aren't. Like um, drinking milk on camera. They tried to make drinking milk somehow to be a white supremacist symbol and the media bought it. They also, they got some dumbass to believe that this OK symbol was some kind of white supremacist symbol because it, uh, I don't know, it's like white, the W, and this somehow represents a P. And then I saw this one dumbass person in InfoSec, Matt, from like the Bay Area, who bought into this stuff, hook, line, and single, and it's fucking, it, 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 sorry, it was just freaking sad. Um, but they'll troll people into believing this just to get the media to run with some narrative. And then as soon as they post that out, they, someone posts like a ton of pictures of Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton and everybody else throwing up the same symbol because it's just the okay symbol. Everything is good. It's, everything is going right. <sighs> the media will buy a lot of stuff, especially when it comes from the internet. Eventually, though, Shia assaults someone on February 10th, 2017 and gets arrested uh, at this particular 
incident, uh, particular uh, art display. So he moves the display to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Different location, what do you think happens? What do you think happens? Goddamn right. <laughs> in case you don't know, Breaking Bad takes place in Albuquerque, New Mexico. All right, so he moved to an undisclosed location, just a flag and a stream of the flag up against the air. How do you think this is going to work out? Behold the power of weaponized autism. All right, the time zone, they kind of based off of where the sunset was. So they kind of had an idea, okay, yeah, it's towards the eastern part of the United States. Okay, let's start triangulating. So our artists say, oh, there's a, there's a contrail. There's a contrail. What's happening in the air right at this moment or a few seconds ago, giving a little time for the stream? Well, we think maybe there was this flight and this flight. Well, we can triangulate things to down to maybe about this rough area. Then they start looking through social media. And this one particular lady, she, uh, I believe she was a waitress at some diner, and she posts uh, that uh, Shia LaBeouf had visited her at Aunt B's. Uh, it takes a photo. of. I mean, a star comes to your diner, you take a photo. I mean, that's a good thing to do. And, of course, that gives them the location of Aunt B's. So they now know, oh, so Shia it was someplace in Greenville, Tennessee. Also, I think uh, our TMZ or someone else posted about um, him... Uh, doing fly fishing in the area. So Paul's, Paul's astronomers uh, started looking at the constellation. By the way, I stole that term from a guy who, on YouTube who goes by the name Internet Historian. I highly recommend checking out his stuff. It's hilarious. Uh, but the people start looking like constellations and so forth, and they triangulate down where it's at. Then they have somebody uh, start driving around the area in a vehicle honking a horn and listening on the webcam to see whether or not they can figure out where these people are. So, he's driving around, honk, 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 and they figure out where it's at. Wait a second. And so, they find the flag, they take the flag down, and they raise a manga hat, which obviously Shia would not be happy with. Um, but anyway, they uh, find it, found it. Weaponized autism, a non-spent hours triangulating planes, chemtrails. And they figured out what it was. But uh, Shia is not to be stopped. He decides to do this uh, again. So let's go for, um, let's say, round four. Okay. The flag got moved to Liverpool in the UK. First of all, it's a protest about a U.S. president. It really should stay in the United States. It's about U.S. citizens. Uh, moving into Liverpool in itself seems like Shia giving up. But um, they moved it to the Media Arts Center in Liverpool. And, well, <laughs> there are plenty of British pollsters and uh, B-tards out there as well. So, guards had disabled access to the third and fourth floor. So people were willing to get up there to get to the flag, and they couldn't because it was disabled. Now, me and myself, I carry around something called elevator keys. All these standard elevators generally have the same keys by manufacturer. So I would have used one of those, but these people may not have known about that. Um, they had to go different ways. So they started planning ways to screw up Shia still. So um, one plan was to get to a neighboring building and jump across the four meter gap. I'm not sure if that actually happened, because somebody did get up there, but we'll get to that in a bit. The idea also came up of cutting of a high powered laser. Uh, someone also thought Operation Chandelier it would make a Bluetooth speaker and play that Chandelier song I was playing at the very beginning of my talk, which has become, because um, the group that performs it is named Pepe, it's become kind of an uh, anthem for the Kekistani people. So that was one idea that they were going to do. Uh, but that didn't necessarily come through. Also, they thought of doing a drone strike, like take a drone up there and mess the flag. Um, there was a bunch of people apparently who sent applications to work at the museum just so they could get access. Like, this is the most beautiful game of capture the flag ever on the internet. Uh, three people who did, though, eventually scale the building, found the flag was zip tied in place, and they were caught in a security camera. That no, nobody got arrested, but they got away. But because of all this shenanigans, eventually uh, they, the, the place that had the, uh, this, the exhibit on the display tweeted out on police advice, Fat and LaBeouf, uh, Winoko and Turner have removed the installation. He will not divide us.us due to dangerous illegal trespassing. So in the end, well, I guess Paul ends up winning on multiple continents.
So, what lessons can we learn from this? Public displays of virtue signaling and unwarranted self-importance will get you trolled really hard, especially if you're a Hollywood person. Uh, flight patterns and constellations are identifiable for location, which who, man, that takes effort. And 4chan has a lot of time on their hands. So there's a lot more information on these various links on this particular incident. So that brings me to a very rare Pepe, uh, and for me to ask you if you have any questions. Any questions about the various trolling? I want to do more research on the ISIS stuff, by the way, because that really fascinates me. Uh, you, because you're closest. Oh, Galaxy 8's apparently turned on GPS on by default on the camera. That's not good. But then again, that, that was the default for many years before that. So it's probably a lot of phones that have that. You know what? I need to check my phone. But you, sir. I don't know. Just the, the sheer idea of a bunch of people getting together going, you know what? We got time on our hands. Let's mess with somebody online. <laughs> I don't know. This, uh, it, 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 it. I can't explain to you why it fascinates me, because it fascinates me. It's something innate in me, just the power of people coming together for a common goal. <laughs> but a goal that, has, you know, that is so, what's the term, petty, sometimes. It just fascinates me. I don't know. I can't give you a good explanation better than that, man. I'm sorry. Anybody else? A term used in the military for when someone lets you know where they're at by honking your horn is called dicking. dicking. I'm repeating it so it's on the recording. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, I didn't know that. You're trying, somebody's trying to do something, accomplish something, and somebody else comes along and does something like trolling. It's another term for trolling. It's just, it's dicking, dicking people in the military. Okay, yeah. cool beans. <laughs> Which branch? Uh, all across. Okay, cool. Well, thanks for your service. You, sir. Yes. Ah, uh, lol in Korean, is it not? Uh, so lol in Orkish. Lol in Orkish, okay. So kek is lol in Orkish, and, but kek also happens to coincide with the name of an Egyptian god of chaos, whose one of the forms is a frog, which they connect to Pepe, and there's a whole innate, the, the, the meme connections here. There's a guy that goes, he's Jordan B. Peterson, he's a, a psychiatrist in uh, Canada, who does, um, I try to hold it against him because he's Canadian, but uh, he, he does a whole thing on like um, archetypes and like ancient god figures and what they mean in human psychology and so forth. And yes, Keck does come from uh, my understanding like World of Warcraft and so forth and Orkish. But my understanding the Keck to may also come from the way Koreans do L LOL. And then Keck is also Egyptian. There's a bunch of things that co is coincided to come together along with Pepe to... Yeah, to make this whole meme. Like, that's an entire religion that people have made up around Kekism. Anybody else? Yes? Pepe to kill a mouse in his junior fraternity. Okay. Well, Pepe's kind of a cool name, so I can understand that. If I had a frog, I'd name him Pepe. My last uh, frog-like animal was a toad, uh, Buffalo Americanus. I, I called him Duncan McToad, the Clan McToad. I was going to try to get him a, a friend, Richie Ranid, who would be a frog, but that's a Highlander reference. It's just too obscure to go into. I used to love that show. Yes? The police and so forth. To my knowledge, since it's all open source in, s sources, I mean, you're in, people say, you can't record me. I don't give you permission to record me. Well, if you're in public, you don't have a legal right not to be recorded. And that's the information they're using. Everything they're using is, you know, I guess largely public, well, public domain is not the right term. So there's really not much these people can do about it. I know there's a few people from Antifa who are whining about, oh, you're doxing us, you're doxing us. You're physically assaulting people. I don't 
yeah, my, my heart goes out to them now. Uh, to my knowledge, because the stuff they're using is not like private information uh, of people, uh, it's not really protected. It's someone like um, oh, Tim Pool's out there. I think it's, no, it's Tim Pool. I think I said Tim Miller earlier. It's Tim Pool. He's like filming stuff at these various protests, and people happen to use the footage he has on YouTube, and they figure out who, who someone is. Well, what you're going to do? The copyright, you're, you're in a public space, so you don't have an expectation of privacy. Tim Pool probably owns the uh, copyright to the footage, but he has it on YouTube where you can easily view it, so nah, I don't know if there's any recourse, to my knowledge. But uh, someone who's a lawyer might speak up on that. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Uh, I'll get you next. You know, I did see someone putting out some ah, crap. I want to say during the uh, British phase of that uh, Capture the Flag event, <laughs> there were some people putting out some fake ops like, yeah, we're going to do this, that, and this other thing. But other than that, uh, no, uh, not really. I have heard of other people like InfoSec who deliberately put out fake information about themselves online to make research harder. Like, you, you have been to like, I think it's, what is it? Is it FamilyTreeNow.com or something like that? It's family. There's a couple of really good... Right, if you Google cyber stalking and doxing, I'm like one of the top Google hits. Um, and, but I, I basically made a collection of links. Um, and uh, those sites out there where you can find tons of information, you just know someone's name and their general location. I've heard of people putting out false information, but it didn't come up with a whole lot in the research I did for this talk. I don't really have one to give you off the top of my head, no, I'm afraid. I suppose probably converting uh, formats. Uh, I do most of my image work in uh, paint.net. I believe if you open it up and then export it as a different format, it probably will remove it, but I'm not sure. I need to do more research on that, but no, I don't know I have apt. I just know that it's in the settings on your phone, but depending on which version of Android you got, which version of iOS you got, that setting, I don't have a, I can't tell you exactly where to go in to turn it off. Add a comment, sure. There are, uh, there are parts of the app that are in the iOS that are on the Android version. Like, for example, on the Android. A gentleman said that there are all applications out there for iOS and Android for scrubbing data. I assume you'd probably just look up EXIF data in whatever app store you use, and hopefully it will show you something that will let you scrub it. I've seen examples of like, um, oh, when some of the Gamergate stuff was going on way back when, where people would dox someone who was actually on the Gamergate side, but then put in wrong information. People do dox wrong, but generally the, the wrong doxings don't get as much publicity. So I know it happens, but I don't have, I, it's not really something that came up much in my research. If I had to go look for it, I could find it. But yeah, there are times, because if you, if you Google stalk me, you may get me. Or you may get someone who's like distantly related to me in middle, the middle of Kentucky. Uh, it happens. But yeah, I don't have a good case examples because the, 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 the cases where, you know, weaponized autism fail aren't as funny as the ones when they succeed. Anybody else? Yes? Boston Marathon bombing. Oh yeah, because 4chan was trying to trace down those people. Or oh, Reddit. Oh, it was Reddit? And they misdiagnosed who they, or misidentified who was the Boston bombers? Okay, that would be an example of a, of, of a miss. It might be something I want to include in future decks. This is the first time I present this particular talk. I may very well present it again, especially after I do some more research on ISIS. Anybody else? Well, I think that's everybody then. And uh, if you want to talk to me after the uh, talk, uh, fine with that, come find me. A uh, little bit of uh, ending business. Here's a bunch of people who on Twitter helped me out to talk a little bit. I'd like to thank for the, um, what is it, the dabbing peppy. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and thank uh, Mr. Chuck for that. And um, also, quick announcement, DerbyCon's coming up on September 20th through the 24th, the first few days out of training. Uh, best of luck getting a ticket. You'll probably find one on Twitter eventually because we sold out in three minutes this year. But there's other cons you can go to that are great. Uh, Louisville InfoSec, 
Uh, that's another local con that's happening just before Derby. Skydog Con in Nashville, Tennessee. Good Con up in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Circle City Con up in Indy, which is happening right now, and I will be driving up there uh, later tonight with uh, Johnny Christmas to attend it. Show Me Con, which well, I think you already know about that, and NOLA Con down in New Orleans. And that's it. Thank you very much for your time.